Who's the Boss? It was a popular TV series that aired in the 1980s. It revolves around a widowed advertising executive who hires a housekeeper to help him raise his daughter. The catch? The housekeeper happens to be a man which shakes up the traditional family dynamic. If you're curious about this classic show, stick around. There are plenty of funny, shocking, and sad facts coming up, so keep watching. When was the first time you watched this series? Or out of the many roles, which one was your favorite? We're eager to hear your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this series. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Who's the Boss? Premiered in 1984, becoming a hit TV series. It revolves around Tony Michelli, a former baseball player turned housekeeper who relocates with his daughter, Samantha, to work for a divorced advertising executive, Angela Bauer. The show is set in suburban Connecticut, where the cultural clash between Tony's working-class background and Angela's upper-class lifestyle creates comedic tension. As Tony navigates his new role as a housekeeper, he forms close bonds with Angela's son, Jonathan, and her feisty mother, Mona. Together, they navigate the challenges of balancing work, family, and personal relationships. The dynamic between Tony and Angela evolves from an employee-employer relationship to a close friendship, hinting at romantic tension throughout the series. The show received critical acclaim for its witty writing, engaging characters, and humorous exploration of gender roles and family dynamics. Who's the Boss? garnered several awards and nominations during its run, including multiple Emmy and Golden Globe nominations. It remained popular throughout its eight-season run, cementing its status as a beloved classic sitcom. Alyssa Milano, known for her role in the 1984 TV series Who's the Boss, is a big fan of baseball. Growing up in Brooklyn, she supported the New York Yankees. However, when she moved to Los Angeles at the age of 12, she became a big supporter of the Los Angeles Dodgers and holds a Dodgers season ticket. She not only writes a blog for Major League Baseball's website, but is also friends with pitcher Carl Pavano, who played for different teams including the Montreal Expos, the Florida Marlins, and the New York Yankees. In another interesting turn, Fran Drescher, known for her role in The Nanny, played a character in Who's the Boss? Later in The Nanny, the same actress played a similar role, highlighting connections in the television industry. Walter Okuix, another figure associated with Who's the Boss, faced health challenges. Since 2000, he has been disabled following knee surgery. His son, Zach, made a significant sacrifice by dropping out of high school to care for him. Eventually, Zach became a writer and producer. Despite leaving school, he studied for the JED test and achieved a perfect score of 4,000, a rare accomplishment shared by only six people in the nation out of 569,000 test takers in California. These behind-the-scenes stories give insight into the lives of those involved in the show, showcasing their interests, connections, and challenges. The series, although primarily known for its on-screen dynamics, leaves a trail of interconnected stories off-screen as well. In 1984, a TV show called Who's the Boss began starring Nicole Eggert. Later, she joined Splash in 2013, where she came in second place without getting hurt. There was a German version called Ein Job Fuhrs Leben, which aired on RTL but got cancelled after one season. Another version, The Upper Hand, aired in Britain, starring Honor Blackman, and lasted until 1996. The house you see in the show's intro and some scenes is actually located at 13 Onondaga St. Rye, New York. Premiering in 1984, Who's the Boss? starred Judith Light and Tony Danza in important roles. As the story unfolded, Light showed her talent by playing Angela Bauer. She also did something brave for her role in Wit in 1999 by shaving her head. Tony Danza, known for Taxi, had an interesting life before acting. He used to be a boxer and later taught English to 10th graders in Philadelphia. These different experiences added depth to his acting. Their diverse experiences made Light and Danza's careers more interesting. Light's decision to shave her head and Danza's boxing background and teaching experience added layers to their acting. These unexpected stories make their careers more fascinating. In the end, Who's the Boss? helped Light and Danza start successful careers. Their stories show how artists can be resilient and versatile. They have left a mark on the entertainment world that goes beyond just a TV show. Their work has touched people all over the world. Who's the Boss? debuted in 1984, featuring Tony Danza, who notably drove the taxi in the opening credits of Taxi in the late 1970s. Alyssa Milano, another star of Who's the Boss? 
had her image used for the character Ariel in the Little Mermaid animation. Interestingly, Milano, who later appeared in Charmed, had her character transform into a mermaid, coinciding with her past connection to the Disney film. Milano, pregnant during the filming of New Year's Eve in 2011, named her son Milo after actor Milo Ventimiglia, who introduced her to her husband. Despite her pregnancy, she returned to work seven months after giving birth to film mistresses. These unique facts add depth to the background of the cast of Who's the Boss? Alyssa Milano, known for her roles in Mistresses and Charmed, faced challenges while filming Who's the Boss? During the second season of Mistresses, she was pregnant with her daughter Elizabella, resorting to carrying large purses to conceal her pregnancy. Milano returned to work 18 months after giving birth, but left what goes around comes around due to production relocation. The pilot episode of Who's the Boss? was filmed in October 1983, but held back for almost a year due to fears of rejection by ABC executives. Interestingly, Milano has portrayed two characters who rode horses naked Phoebe Halliwell in Charmed and the mayor's daughter in Spin City. Premiering in 1984, the beloved sitcom Who's the Boss introduced audiences to a heartwarming story about family dynamics and funny moments. Michael Learn took on the role of a mother raising three sons, Chris, Caleb, and Lucas Donat. Alongside her, Judith Light played a crucial character, representing a working woman torn between career goals and family duties. Light's portrayal deeply connected with viewers, showing the struggles and victories of modern women balancing work and family. Behind the scenes, Light, like her character, faced similar challenges. Despite her love for acting, she wanted to be a full-time mom, a dream often postponed by her busy career. Nonetheless, Light and her husband, Robert Desiderio, actively supported causes they cared about. Their strong backing for gay rights earned them praise from the Matthew Shepard Foundation, showing their advocacy and kindness. As the show became more popular, it went beyond just entertainment, starting important discussions about gender roles, family life, and social justice. Through its lovable characters and relatable stories, Who's the Boss? made a lasting impact on popular culture, bringing people together and inspiring audiences for years. Looking back, the show's influence remains strong, showing the power of storytelling and genuine human experiences. Though the characters may have left our screens, their influence lives on, reminding us of the importance of love, laughter, and the connections we share. This story, full of humor, heart, and humanity, stays ingrained in TV history, a timeless favorite enjoyed by many. Judith Light, famous for winning Tony Awards in plays like Other Desert Cities and The Assembled Parties, got three Tony nominations in a row for her acting in plays. Tony Danza was given the nickname King of Brooklyn at the Welcome Back to Brooklyn Festival in 1999. Catherine Hellmond, who played important roles in TV shows like Soap and Who's the Boss, starred in two popular sitcoms set in Connecticut during the 1980s. Hellman's characters added richness to the humor of both shows. These series, known for their great cast and lasting popularity, are considered classics in American TV history. Who's the Boss? premiered in 1984 and aired for eight seasons. Interestingly, only the first season is available on DVD. Catherine Hellman, a pivotal figure in the series, made waves when she sported a red bikini despite being around 60 years old at the time. However, beyond the cast charm, the show's appeal lay in its cozy ambience. The warm cinematography, primary colors in wardrobe, and homey setting, with scenes primarily unfolding in a well-decorated home, contributed to its allure. The kitchen, adorned with copper pots and a swinging wood door leading to a floral couched living room, exuded warmth. A fireplace with a horse figurine added to the welcoming atmosphere, while outdoor scenes often evoked a Connecticut fall, enhancing the 80s magic of the series. Who's the Boss? debuted in 1984. In August 2020, plans for a revival were announced, with Tony Danza and Alyssa Milano returning. However, the revival faced delays, but still has plans to move forward as of early 2022. Tony Danza often watches the TV series 24 with Liza Minnelli. Alyssa Milano auditioned for Malrats, but lost the role to Shannon Doherty, who later became her co-star in Charmed. Who's the Boss? premiered in 1984 with Catherine Hellman as a key figure. Her spouse, David Christian, was notably younger, 14 years her junior. They met in 1962 when he was 19 and she was 33. Despite the age difference, they were together for seven years before tying the knot in 1969. 
Their marriage lasted 57 years until Hellman's passing in 2019. Alyssa Milano, another important cast member, effectively used Twitter to support Charity Water, a nonprofit focused on providing clean water. Instead of birthday presents, she encouraged her followers to donate to the cause on her birthday. Milano's efforts raised an impressive $92,568, earning her a Do Something Twitter Award in 2010. Nicole Eggert, recognized for her role in the show, co-hosted the 1989 Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards alongside Will Wheaton. These three actors played significant roles in the success of Who's the Boss through their talents and charitable actions. Alyssa Milano was considered to take over Shannon Doherty's role on Beverly Hills 9210, but Tiffany Thiessen got the part instead. Michael Learn did great in a play and got an award for it. Tony Danza inspired a metal rock band with his name. They all added something special to Who's the Boss, making it a hit show. Together, they made a big impact on TV and entertainment. Their story shows how important a good cast is for a show's success. Fans still remember Who's the Boss. Fondly, this was Alyssa Milano, known for her role in Who's the Boss, faced legal issues in June 2017. She sued her former business manager, Kenneth Helley, and his firm for $10 million. Milano accused him of forging her signature on checks, neglecting her bills and taxes, and pressuring her into unwise investments. Meanwhile, Catherine Hellman, another cast member, grew up in a broken home as her parents divorced when she was young. On a different note, Magali Barney provided the French dubbing for Milano's films and series, including Who's the Boss, since its inception. Milano's legal battle and Hellman's family history offer insight into the lives behind the characters of Who's the Boss. In 1984, a popular TV series called Who's the Boss started airing. Tony Michelli, played by Tony Danza, was ranked 23rd on TV Guide's list of the best TV dads. Before Catherine Hellman won a Golden Globe in 1989 and Alyssa Milano won consecutive Kids' Choice Awards, Judith Light, the main cast member, had already received awards. She won the Daytime Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress two years in a row for her role in a soap opera called One Life to Live. Alyssa Milano, another important cast member, played four different characters named Amy in her career. Milano showed her versatility in roles like Amy Winslow in The Surrogate, Amy in Buying the Cow, Amy Kane in Kiss the Bride, and the famous Amy Fisher in Casualties of Love, The Long Island Lolita Story. These performances added depth to the series. Alyssa Milano, despite impressing in her audition for a lead role, was cast as Kimmy in the series. Producers hesitated to give a former child star a major role, so they chose Lara Flynn Boyle instead. In season 7, Billy replaced Jonathan as the show's cute kid, but the move didn't succeed, and he left the series by the season's end. Tony Michelli, a character in the series, was depicted as having played baseball for the St. Louis Cardinals. The decision to bring in Billy was an attempt to inject fresh energy into the storyline, but unfortunately, it didn't quite resonate with the audience as hoped. Despite the initial skepticism surrounding Alyssa Milano's casting, her portrayal of Kimmy won over viewers and became an integral part of the show's dynamic. Who's the Boss? was known for its ensemble cast and the chemistry among its characters, which kept audiences engaged throughout its run. Who's the Boss? debuted in 1984, featuring a cast predominantly of Italian ancestry. Tony Danza, Alyssa Milano, and Danny Pintoro were key members. Pintoro stirred controversy among fans due to an inappropriate photo he shared online. Leslie Nielsen, known for his roles in significant films like Forbidden Planet and Airplane, made a guest appearance on the show. Walter Okuix, who portrayed a recurring character, had family connections within the industry. He was the father of writer-producer Zach Okuix and related to others in the entertainment field. Throughout its run, Who's the Boss? captured audiences with its comedic moments and memorable characters. Who's the Boss? aired in the mid-1980s with Tony Danza, Judith Light, and Catherine Helmand as its core cast, appearing in all 196 episodes. Catherine Helmand earned acclaim, securing seven Emmy nominations, four for Soap, and two for her role in Who's the Boss? Additionally, she received three Golden Globe nominations, winning twice for her performances in Soap and Who's the Boss? James Coco, who had a recurring role in the series as Grandpa Nick, was honored posthumously in a special episode titled A Farewell to Nick in 1987. His portrayal left a lasting impact on the show. 
James Coco earned a nomination for Best Actor at the 1970 Tony Awards for his performance in Last of the Red Hot Lovers. Judith Light's portrayal of Karen Wallach on the stand in One Life to Live is widely celebrated. It remains a model in acting classes across the nation and was recognized as one of TV Guide's 100 Most Memorable Moments on Television. Judith Light is an alumna of the College of Fine Arts at Carnegie Mellon University, graduating from the School of Drama in 1970. In Who's the Boss? Angela's father, Robert Robinson, Mona's former husband, was portrayed by Ephraim Zimbalis Jr. He made a single appearance in the episode Operation Mona. Michael Learned, known for her role, was only 11 years older than Richard Thomas, who played her oldest child on The Waltons. She was also more than 12 years younger than Patricia Neal, who originated the role of Olivia Walton in the TV movie pilot The Homecoming and won a Golden Globe for it. Alyssa Milano, another prominent figure, experienced a tragedy when her family's house caught fire. Her father attempted to rescue their dog, risking his life, but unfortunately, the dog didn't survive. He sustained injuries after jumping out of a second-story window due to the intense heat. Judith Light received a 2013 Tony Award nomination for Best Featured Actress for her role in Richard Greenberg's drama, The Assembled Parties, staged at the Samuel E. Friedman Theatre Manhattan Theatre Club in New York City. Alyssa Milano stirred controversy by posing nude in the 1993 pages of Bikini Magazine alongside her television father, Tony Danza. Danza expressed concern but refrained from intervening, clarifying that he played her father on screen, not in real life. Milano, responding to the press, asserted that she already had an Italian father at home and didn't require another one. Alyssa Milano attended Reese Witherspoon's wedding to Jim Toth on March 26, 2011. Interestingly, Milano had co-starred with Witherspoon 15 years earlier in the film Fear. In summary, Judith Light's Tony Award nomination and Alyssa Milano's noteworthy incidents contribute to the diverse and intriguing aspects surrounding the personalities associated with the show. In 1984, Who's the Boss? hit television screens, quickly becoming a beloved sitcom. Leslie Nielsen, known for his role in Forbidden Planet, showed early admiration for the show, which also influenced Star Trek. Judith Light, notable for her role as Jean White in the Ryan White story, commemorated the 20th anniversary of Ryan's passing with a speech at Klaus Hall. Fran Drescher, who later starred in The Nanny, recreated elements of Who's the Boss, like the white horse statuette, albeit with subtle changes in color. These nods to the original series maintained its charm while fitting seamlessly into the new show. Nielsen, Light, and Drescher each played significant roles in the broader cultural landscape, showcasing their talents and leaving lasting impressions on audiences. In 1984, the TV show Who's the Boss? started getting people interested with its mix of humor and heart. Its main star, Tony Danza, became famous playing the friendly housekeeper Tony Michelli. But off-camera, the cast had interesting backgrounds. Coming from a Danish heritage, Leslie Nielsen's dad added Scandinavian charm, while his mom's Welsh roots brought more cultural richness. Meanwhile, Tony Danza's road to fame had surprises. He once exchanged letters with the rapper Tupac Shakur during Tupac's time in jail. What started as a letter turned into an unexpected friendship, despite their different backgrounds and jobs. In a community episode, Abed Nadir, the pop culture expert, hints that Angela Bauer is the real boss, echoing the dynamics of who's the boss. It shows how the show still influences today's culture. These connections offer a peek into Hollywood's history where personal stories mix with on-screen tales to make something memorable. Who's the boss? Maybe just a TV show, but it sticks around in popular culture. Who's the boss? Is a notable 1984 TV series? Alyssa Milano, a cast member, inspired the name of a spaceship in Guardians of the Galaxy called the Milano. Leslie Nielsen, another actor in the series, received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 65141 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California on December 9, 1988. Additionally, the sitcom featured Volvic French water as the official drink, with characters frequently shown drinking from its bottles. This detail was later replicated by Fran Drescher in The Nanny, who had Evian French water in the hands of many characters. Ironically, although Fran Fine is often depicted as cheap, Volvic was actually France's more affordable alternative to the pricier Evian. These facts highlight interesting aspects of Who's the Boss, from its cast members' achievements to the subtle product placements within the show. In the TV series Who's the Boss? 
Alyssa Milano, known for her role as Samantha Michelli, faced challenges due to her fear of water. This fear made her underwater scenes in other shows difficult, like in Charmed. Frances Bay, who appeared in the series finale Savor the Veal Part 3, also featured in finales of Happy Days and Seinfeld. Judith Light, despite being only three years older than Mitch Pilgy, portrayed his mother in Dallas. These facts shed light on some interesting aspects of the actors' careers. Alyssa Milano, known for her role in the 1984 TV series, has a connection with her ex-fiancé Scott Wolfe. They both appeared in Lady and the Tramp Two Scamps Adventure. Their engagement, though short-lived in 1993, adds a personal touch to Milano's career. Tony Danza, a key figure in the series, faced a tough situation on September 9, 1977, when he was knocked down by Ralph Rocky Garcia in a boxing match. However, he showed resilience by getting back up and knocking out Garcia in the first round, demonstrating his determination and toughness. Michael Learned, another actor from the series, is the godmother of Christopher Plummer's daughter, Amanda Plummer. Amanda's middle name is Michael, honoring Learned. This connection adds a personal aspect to Learn's life beyond her acting career. In summary, the cast of the 1984 TV series has personal connections and stories. Milano's reunion with her ex-fiancé, Danza's resilient moment in the boxing ring, and Learn's godmother role in the Plummer family all contribute to the diverse backgrounds of the Who's the Boss cast. Alyssa Milano, famous for her role in Who's the Boss, inspired the character Ariel in The Little Mermaid. Tony Danza, who had a horse named after him, went to the 2014 Kentucky Derby as a guest because of his role in the sitcom. Catherine Hellman, who got nominated for a Tony Award in 1973, also did great work on Broadway. Milano's influence even reached animation, while Danza's connection to horse racing shows his influence outside of acting. Hellman's nomination shows how talented she is in different kinds of acting. These three made their mark in more ways than just on the sitcom. Who's the Boss is a TV show that started in 1984. Tony Danza, one of its main actors, has two daughters, Catherine and Emily, from his previous marriage with Tracy Robinson. Catherine was born in 1987, while Emily was born in 1993. Leslie Nielsen, another famous figure from Who's the Boss, gained recognition beyond acting. In 2003, the Grant Maswan College in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, established the Leslie Nielsen School of Communications, with him present for the ceremony. Additionally, he was honored with a Golden Palm Star on the Palm Springs Walk of Stars in Palm Springs, California, on December 4, 1997. These details give insights into Tony Danza's personal life and Leslie Nielsen's post-acting career. They add to the broader context surrounding the individuals associated with the TV show, Who's the Boss? A TV show from 1984 starred Tony Danza and Alyssa Milano, both from Brooklyn. The show reflected their real lives, making their characters feel genuine. Leslie Nielsen, another actor in the series, came from a family of cops. His dad, Ingvard Nielsen, worked for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. This added realism to Nielsen's role. Tony Danza's character, Tony Michelli, made a big impression and was named one of the top TV dads by TV Guide in 2004. This shows how much people liked his character, cementing his place as a memorable TV dad. In short, Who's the Boss? had great chemistry between its actors who brought real-life elements to their roles. Leslie Nielsen's connection to law enforcement added depth, while Tony Danza's portrayal of Tony Michelli was beloved by viewers. Who's the Boss? was a popular TV show in the 1980s that helped make stars out of Alyssa Milano, Lee Remini, Tony Danza, and Judith Light. There's an interesting story about one episode, 115, which was supposed to start a new show called Living Dolls, but because of last-minute changes, it didn't air until later. The main character, Angela, liked to wear primary colors like black, white, red, and blue for work, and softer colors like pink at home. On the other hand, Mona, another character, preferred bold colors like purple, blue-green, and raspberry. These color choices matched the characters' personalities and roles in the show, making them stand out visually. Who's the Boss? Left a mark on television history because of its cast and this unique episode situation. Michael learned Marion Selda's Christina Rauner, and she received the 1996 Drama Log Award for Outstanding Ensemble Performance for Three Tall Women at the Mark Taper Forum Theater in Los Angeles, California. Tony Danza appeared in all 196 episodes of Who's the Boss? 
and in all 114 episodes of Taxi. He was one of four cast members to achieve this feat in Taxi. Judith Light received the Helen Hayes Award in Washington, D.C., and the Elliot Norton Award in Boston for her outstanding performance in the off-Broadway tour of Wit. Starting in 1984, the TV show with Tony Danza, Judith Light, Catherine Hellman, and Alyssa Milano became really popular. Alyssa Milano, known for playing Samantha Michelli, had seven tattoos like a sacred heart and rosary beads. Leslie Nielsen, not a main actor, got noticed for his work in 2002. Sadly, Catherine Hellman died in 2019. Judith Light became the oldest surviving cast member after that, followed by Tony Danza. This show was very famous and is still loved today for its funny and heartfelt stories about family and work. This summary of the beloved sitcom was, Who's the Boss? is a TV series from the 1980s featuring Tony Danza, Alyssa Milano, and Judith Light. Tony Danza began his boxing career in 1976, winning his debut match by knocking out Earl Harris in the first round. Alyssa Milano, known for her role in the series, also has a successful music career with five albums released in Japan, each selling over a million copies and going platinum. Judith Light, another prominent cast member, met her husband Robert Desiderio while working together on the soap opera One Life to Live. These connections add depth to the cast background, enriching the series with their diverse talents and experiences. Who's the Boss? aired in 1984 and quickly gained popularity. The role of Samantha Michelli was highly sought after, with 1 in 500 girls auditioning for it. By season 6, there were notable changes in the characters' appearances. Angela swapped her feral winged hairstyle for a sleeker, longer look. Mona adopted bangs and a side parting for a more youthful appearance. Jonathan ditched his bowl cut for a more mature style with darker hair underneath his blonde locks. Tony maintained his silky and flattering hair throughout. However, Alyssa Milano's decision to dye her hair a dark shade and cut its length led to on-screen teasing and displeasure from her character's father, Tony. Tony Danza, who played Tony, was the only living regular cast member of Taxi not to appear in Man on the Moon due to other commitments. The film featured most of the cast members appearing as their younger selves. Who's the Boss? is a TV series from 1984. Leslie Nielsen, known for his role in movies, was considered for a part in The Shining in 1980, which eventually went to Jack Nicholson. Alyssa Milano, a cast member of the show, contributed to a fundraiser for the South Shore MCA in Staten Island, New York, by donating a signed collector's item. In 2009, Milano married her boyfriend, Dave Bug Lowry, at his family home in New Jersey after a seven-month engagement. Unfortunately, she experienced a miscarriage that year while pregnant with their first child. They have since welcomed a son named Milo Thomas Bug Lowry and a daughter named Elisabella Dillon Bug Lowry. Alyssa Milano has made significant contributions to the entertainment industry and continues to be active in various projects. Who's the Boss? aired in 1984. Nicole Eggert, known for her roles in the series, had a relationship with Corey Haim. Haim proposed to Eggert, but they later ended their engagement. Alyssa Milano, another cast member, starred alongside Owen Wilson, Jenna Fisher, and Christina Applegate in Hall Pass. Milano and her co-stars all became first-time parents in the same year the film released. Additionally, Alyssa Milano is the older sister of Corey Milano and the cousin of Eric Lloyd and Emily Ann Lloyd. She was also once married to Sinjin Tate, the lead singer of Ramai Zero. These connections add layers to the lives of the actors beyond Who's the Boss? itself. Who's the Boss? was a highly rated sitcom from 1984. Its spin-off, Living Dolls About Girl Models at an Agency, is considered one of the worst sitcoms ever. Leslie Nielsen received a Lifetime Achievement Award in 2005 at the Palm Beach International Film Festival Gala. Michael Learned, initially billed as Miss Michael Learned on The Waltons, won the role of Olivia to avoid confusion about her gender. In the TV series, Who's the Boss? Mona was initially planned to be Angela's older sister. However, producers couldn't find a suitable actress for the role. Consequently, they decided to reimagine Mona as Angela's mother. Leslie Nielsen auditioned for the role of Masala in Ben-Hur, but the part ultimately went to Stephen Boyd. Michael Learned, who starred in the series, became the mother-in-law of Tracy Wald Donat, daughter of Helen Reddy. Tracy married Michael's son Lucas Donat on July 20, 1984. Premiering in 1984, Who's the Boss? quickly became a household favorite across America. 
Leslie Nielsen, famous for his role in the Naked Gun series, faced a downturn in the box office during the 1990s and early 2000s with his non-franchise films failing to impress audiences. However, he experienced a resurgence in 23 and 2006 with supporting roles in popular movies like Scary Movie 3 and 4. Alyssa Milano, a star of the show, delved into fashion, launching her own line of sporty fashion for female fans in 2007. Tony Danza, another lead, received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1988 for his work in television. Together with the rest of the cast and crew, they significantly shaped the popularity and influence of Who's the Boss? on TV. In all 88 episodes of the show Soap, Catherine Hellman played a significant role. Judith Light was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for Live Theater on September 12, 2019, located at 6 and 200 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. Tony Danza turned down the chance to play Swan and the Warriors so he could take on the role of Tony Banta in Taxi. Eventually, Michael Beck landed the role of Swan. These facts were Judith Light, portraying Angela Bauer, shared an interesting real-life connection with Tony Danza, who played Tony Michelli. Despite their on-screen roles, Light was actually two years older than Danza. In a curious parallel, Danza's second wife resembled Light, boasting similar features. Nicole Eggert, another prominent figure in the series, has two daughters. One, Dylan, was born in May 1998 with ex-boyfriend Justin Herwick. Eggert's other daughter, Keegan, arrived in July 2011, with the father's identity remaining undisclosed. Additionally, Leslie Nielsen, known for his role as Dr. Arnold Harmon in the series, participated in the Chiller Theater Expo in 2008 alongside various actors, including Jamie Lunar, John Schneider, and Angie Dickinson. Leslie Nielsen, known for his role in Who's the Boss? had a unique start in life, enlisting in the Royal Canadian Air Force at 17 and specializing as an aerial gunner. This early experience laid the foundation for his later success in the entertainment industry. Alyssa Milano, another key figure in the series, shares more than just her on-screen presence. Born on the same day as Rosa Blassie and matching her height, Milano brought a distinctive connection to the Who's the Boss? cast in certain episodes, she opted for colored contact lenses, adding a subtle touch to her character. The series, without relying on flashy language, presented interesting behind-the-scenes facts about its cast. It's intriguing to discover the shared birth date and height between Alyssa Milano and Rosa Blassi, as well as the deliberate use of colored contact lenses in Milano's portrayal. In summary, who's the boss? went beyond on-screen dynamics, providing a platform for talented individuals with diverse backgrounds. Leslie Nielsen's early military training and Alyssa Milano's attention to detail in her portrayal offer a deeper understanding of the show's cast. Premiering alongside The Cosby Show, the series Who's the Boss? aired its last episode on the same night as Growing Pains and MacGyver competing against the Golden Girls. During the 2016-S presidential election, Alyssa Milano, who portrayed Samantha in the show, publicly endorsed Bernie Sanders. In the eighth season, Milano expressed her frustration with portraying Samantha for an extended period. This led her to chop her long hair into a shorter style, seeking a fresh perspective for her character. Who's the Boss? It debuted in 1984 and quickly gained popularity. It featured Alyssa Milano, who later appeared in a Details magazine cover alongside other actresses. The show also starred Tony Danza, whose role in this sitcom became his longest-running one, surpassing his stint in Taxi. Danza's character provided comedic moments throughout the eight seasons. Additionally, Milano, known for her acting, revealed her passion for photography in DVD extras for her movie Pathology. Milano's portrayal in Who's the Boss? contributed to the show's success and lasting impact on television. Tony Danza, famous for his role in Who's the Boss? celebrated becoming a grandfather in 2005 when his son Mark Anthony Danza and daughter-in-law Julie welcomed their son Nicholas David. Leslie Nielsen, another actor from the same show, had a half-brother named Gilbert Nielsen who lived in Hobbs, New Mexico. Nielsen's older brother, Eric Nielsen, had important roles in Canadian politics, representing the Yukon Territory as a member of Parliament from 1957 to 1987 and serving as Deputy Prime Minister of Canada from 1984 to 1986. Sadly, Eric Nielsen passed away in 2008 from a massive heart attack in Kelowna, British Columbia. Tony Danza, known for his role as Tony Banta on Taxi, originally had his character named Phil Banta. 
However, the producers opted for his real name, assuming he'd better respond to it. Leslie Nielsen, who stood at 6'1'12 in his younger years, maintained a towering presence in most productions, even in his later years when he moved to Fort Lauderdale, still just over six feet tall. Tony Danza's Taxi co-stars, Marilou Henner and Jeff Conaway, also made guest appearances on the series. Michael learned one of the cast members of the series was married to Canadian-American actor Peter Donat. They had three children together, but their marriage ended in divorce. Catherine Helmond, another actor in the show, consistently misrepresented her age, subtracting five years from her birth date. This deception continued until the internet revealed the truth. James Coco, who took a hiatus from work, returned to the spotlight in 1986 for a Diet Coke commercial. During press interviews, he expressed pride in shedding 42 pounds for the job. These personal details provide a glimpse into the lives of the actors from Who's the Boss, showcasing their experiences beyond the screen. The series, which captured the audience's attention, featured a cast with diverse backgrounds and stories. Judith Light got nominated for an Emmy Award in 2018 for her role as Marilyn Miglin in American Crime Story. She didn't win, though. Tony Danza faced a tough time in 1993 when he got hurt skiing and then lost his house in an earthquake the next year. Catherine Hellmond looked older than her age on Who's the Boss, but she was actually only 55 when the show started. These stories give more depth to Who's the Boss, showing the challenges the cast went through. In the world of the 1984 TV show, there was a clash between the people in charge and the writers over how it should end. Initially, they planned for the main characters, Tony and Angela, to get married. However, the higher-ups at ABC, backed by Tony Danza, didn't like this idea. So, instead of ending with a wedding, the show finished with Tony and Angela going their separate ways. Interestingly, the last episode mirrored the first one, with Tony showing up at Angela's door, just like he did when he first applied for the job. After that show, one of the main actors, Alyssa Milano, faced some trouble in her next project, Charmed. There was tension when one of the main cast members, Shannon Doherty, left the show in 2001. Rose McGowan joined the cast to replace her, and the show eventually ended in 2006. Milano talked about wanting to make a Charmed reunion movie in 2013, but it never happened. However, it showed she was open to fixing any problems. It wasn't until 2015, during Doherty's battle with breast cancer, that everyone showed support for each other. As for who's the boss, ABC thought about canceling it after seven seasons, but the producers managed to convince them to give it an eighth season. They tried something different for that season by finally making Tony and Angela a couple. Unfortunately, the ratings didn't improve and the show was canceled. In summary, the show Who's the Boss had trouble deciding how to end, one of its stars faced challenges in another series, and it had a longer run than expected with a twist in the last season. Who's the Boss aired from 1984 to 1992. Fran Drescher guest starred in one episode titled The Heiress before she later starred in her own show with a similar setup. She played a nanny from Queens who moves into a rich man's home in Manhattan, echoing the dynamic of Tony, the housekeeper from Brooklyn, moving into a rich woman's house in Connecticut. Throughout all eight seasons, the opening credits maintained the same casting order, concluding with Catherine Hellmond receiving the end and as credit. This was unusual for sitcoms of the time, as many changed their opening credits periodically. However, Who's the Boss remained popular despite this consistency. Judith Light made the decision to leave the soap opera One Life to Live to join the cast of Who's the Boss. Her husband, Robert Desiderio, encouraged her to audition for the role. Light has expressed no regrets about her decision. Catherine Hellman's presence in the beloved sitcom was indeed remarkable, gracing each of its 196 episodes with her talent and charm. One memorable moment etched in fans' minds is from the episode titled Car and Driver, where Tony's middle name, Morton, is revealed, adding another layer to his character. Interestingly, before her family's relocation to Los Angeles for her role in the show, Alyssa Milano called the great Kilsultingville area of Staten Island, New York, her home. Such behind-the-scenes tidbits often add depth to our appreciation of the actors and the show itself, enriching our viewing experience with a sense of connection and curiosity. It's fascinating how the lives of the actors intertwine with the characters they portray on screen, lending an extra dimension to the storytelling. Indeed, Who's the Boss? continues to captivate audiences with its timeless appeal, thanks in no small part to the talented individuals both in front of and behind the camera. 
Who's the Boss? First aired in 1984. James Coco, a cast member, lived in his Greenwich apartment where he often spent time with playwrights Terence McNally, Patty Chayefsky, and Israel Horovitz, along with actor Robert Drivas, playing poker weekly. Alyssa Milano, another cast member, was considered for a role on Rizzoli and Isles in 2010. She was ranked 5 in Stuff Magazine's 102 Sexiest Women in the World in 2002. Who's the Boss? premiered in 1984. Alyssa Milano, known for her role in the series, attended the Buckley School in Sherman Oaks, California. She ranked 6 in FHM's 100 Sexiest Women in the World 25 and 22 in the 26th Supplement. Tony Danza, another star of the show, had a lucky escape on May 9, 2005, when the mini stock car he was driving flipped over and he wasn't wearing a helmet. Despite this incident, he remained unharmed. The show gained popularity for its entertaining storyline and talented cast, making it a hit among viewers. Alyssa Milano and Tony Danza's contributions to the series helped solidify its success. After its seventh season, Alyssa Milano attempted to break her contract to pursue academics, but was denied release from the series. Leslie Nielsen was honored as Ambassador of Mountain State Goodwill by then West Virginia Secretary of State Joe Manchin III in 22. Despite common belief, Airplane wasn't Nielsen's first comedy. It was the film that truly established him as a comedic actor, preceding his earlier works like How to Commit Marriage. Who's the Boss? is a TV series that aired in the 1980s. Tony Danza, known for his role in the series, earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in history from the University of Dubuque in 1972, where he attended on a wrestling scholarship. Leslie Nielsen, another actor from the show, was once considered for the role of Willy Wonka in a movie. During a promotional event for a different film, Men with Brooms, in Winnipeg, Canada, Leslie Nielsen and his co-star Paul Gross were granted honorary citizenships by the mayor. These events shed light on the backgrounds and experiences of the actors involved in Who's the Boss? Who's the Boss? Debuted in 1984 with Michael Learned among its cast. Learned, whose surname is pronounced Lear Ned, portrayed a character pivotal to the show's dynamic. Notably, at the close of the third season, producers contemplated spinning off the character Mona into her own series. However, apprehensions arose regarding potential negative impacts on the main show's success. Consequently, plans for the spin-off were scrapped by ABC executives. A two-part episode marked this transition, featuring Mona's departure to run a hotel with her brother while Tony assumed residence in her loft apartment. Yet, a tag sequence was added portraying Mona's return and Tony reverting to living in Angela's house. Catherine Hellman, another integral cast member, had a background shaped by Roman Catholicism but pursued Zen Buddhism alongside her husband, David Christian. This blend of influences underscores the multifaceted nature of the show's actors, adding depth to their portrayals. Who's the Boss? aired in 1984 and featured Judith Light, who won acting Tony Awards in back-to-back -back years for her roles in Desert Cities and the Assembled Parties. She joins the ranks of other notable performers who achieved this feat. Alyssa Milano, another cast member, showed her support for the Indianapolis Colts during Super Bowl Roman 41. Scott Grimes, who played Samantha Michelli's boyfriend Chad McCann, later starred in Party of Five and H. Bo's Band of Brothers series. Currently, he portrays Lieutenant Gordon Malloy and Seth MacFarlane's sci-fi comedy series The Orville. Who's the Boss? was a TV series that aired in the 1980s. James Coco, Leslie Nielsen, and Alyssa Milano were notable figures associated with the show. Coco received nominations for an Oscar, Golden Globe, and Razzie for his role in Only When I Laugh. Similarly, Glenn Close and Maria Bakalova also earned these nominations for different films. Leslie Nielsen was recognized as the Lawrence Olivier of spoofs by film critic Roger Ebert. Alyssa Milano, known for her role in Who's the Boss, ranked highly on VH1's list of greatest child actors and teen stars. Despite these accolades, none of them won in their respective categories. Alyssa Milano stirred controversy with two of her candy's print ads. One depicted a man perfuming her cleavage, while the other showed her in front of a medicine cabinet filled with perfume and condoms. Both ads got rejected by youth-oriented magazines Seventeen and Teen People. Additionally, her Anywhere You Dare TV commercials for the same product, featuring her in black lingerie alongside a goateed man, faced rejection from networks like WB and Fox. Who's the boss? started in 1984 and was a hit on TV. 
Despite being funny, sad things happen behind the scenes. During season two, Catherine Helmond, who played Mona Robinson, lost her husband to a heart attack. Even though she was sad, she kept doing her job well. This sad event shows how hard it can be to make entertainment. It also shows how strong the cast and crew were. They kept going even when things were tough. Who's the boss? Didn't just make people laugh, it also affected the lives of those involved. In 1984, Who's the Boss? hit the screens, becoming a household favorite. Despite its lighthearted tone, the show harbored a dark secret behind the scenes. During its production, the lead actor, Tony Danza, endured a personal tragedy. His father sadly passed away, casting a shadow over the set. Despite his grief, Danza showed remarkable professionalism, continuing to perform admirably. This behind-the-scenes sorrow adds a poignant layer to the show's legacy, reminding viewers of the human emotions that often hide behind the laughter on screen. In the 1984 TV series, Who's the Boss? There's a sad trivia fact concerning Catherine Hellman, who played Mona Robinson. During the show's run, she battled with cancer, but kept it private from the cast and crew. Her health struggles remained unknown until after the series ended. This revelation added a somber note to the show's history, showcasing the challenges faced behind the scenes despite the upbeat nature of the series. Catherine Hellman's silent struggle with cancer while portraying Mona Robinson exemplifies the unseen battles individuals face amidst the glitz and glamour of television production, adding a layer of poignancy to the show's legacy. Despite her personal hardships, Hellman's dedication to her craft shone through in her performance, leaving a lasting impact on viewers. The poignant story behind Catherine Hellman's battle with cancer underscores the complexities and hardships often concealed behind the scenes of beloved TV series like Who's the Boss, reminding us of the resilience and dedication of those who bring these characters to life. In the 1984 TV series Who's the Boss, a poignant trivia fact emerges from behind the scenes. During the show's production, there was an unforeseen and tragic incident involving the set. One of the crew members, while working on the set of the show, suffered a fatal accident. The incident sent shockwaves through the cast and crew, highlighting the dangers often overlooked in the entertainment industry. Despite the tragedy, the show continued, but the loss left a lasting impact on those involved. Amidst the lighthearted comedy and family dynamics portrayed on screen, this real-life event serves as a somber reminder of the risks involved in television production. It underscores the importance of safety measures and the unpredictable nature of working in such environments. Such a heartbreaking occurrence behind the scenes of Who's the Boss serves as a reminder of the realities beyond the glamour of television. It's a sobering moment in the history of the show, reflecting the fragility of life even in the midst of entertainment. In the 1984 TV series Who's the Boss, an unexpected and tragic fact unfolded behind the scenes. During the filming of season two, Tony Danza, who portrayed the character Tony Michelli, suffered a severe injury while performing a stunt. The incident occurred during a scene where Tony's character was supposed to swing from a chandelier. However, Danza lost his grip and fell, resulting in a broken rib and a concussion. Production was halted temporarily to allow Danza to recover, causing delays in the airing schedule. This unfortunate event serves as a reminder of the risks actors face while bringing characters to life on screen.